So next up, I'm just going to clean this thing off with some Windex in a Windex bottle that's kind of working and a cloth and I'm not going to get it super wet, just, uh, just a little damp. Make sure I get all that dust off of there. This thing's pretty dusty, but the table underneath is fine, so I'm just going to set it down on this table now. It's going to take off all the dust and also any grease that happens to be on there because it's a natural degreaser. If there's any grain that has yet to be raised, or, yeah, that sounds, no. If there's any grain left that needs raising first. So this scotch pad is just going to take off that little bit of raised grain that stood up. There's very little of it and it's just right in this area. The rest is good. There we go, it's gone now. So I'm gonna have to clean that again right before I spray it. But for now, we're good to go. Next step is gonna be taping. So I'm gonna tape anything that I don't wanna get paint on. Let's keep in mind that I'm doing this in more than one stage because it's getting more than one color, all right? So the back and the sides and the neck are all gonna be black, I think. <coughs> the face of the headstock I'm gonna do in its own little thing. And then I'm gonna do a transparent green something rather on the front here. So for starters, I'm gonna tape off the areas that I don't want to paint at all. And that includes the fretboard, all the holes, the cavities, that's about it. I'm not going to bother taping off the binding. As you saw me do before, I can simply scrape that after. So scraping paint off the binding is actually faster, typically, than taping it off. That goes for the binding around the body not the binding around the neck. I'm taping that. I have to tape the fretboard anyway. And that's essentially just part of it as far as I'm concerned. Now this isn't like when I was taping the fretboard to work on the frets earlier. Here I want to cover the frets and the fretboard and the nut. Anything that I don't want paint on. So. I don't have to worry about uh, doing it in a specific order to make it easier to unmask like before. I'm just going to tape everything off around the edges and then cover the face. I always do my edges first because they're the most difficult to get to get in place properly. But that's really the only reason. They're the most important part. The edges are typically where people have problems and the paint gets underneath the tape. So I've done the edges of the fretboard now. And with that done, it's a simple matter of running a, a line of tape down the center. Now I'm going to do something similar here. I'm going to tape up the edges of my cavities. That makes me sound like I have bad dental hygiene, but I think you know what I mean.
If you're using shielding paint in your cavities, in your uh, pickup cavities and in the back, then you might want to do that before painting the face. And then tape it up after so that you don't get paint on that shielding paint. I don't personally love shielding paint. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna do something, you might as well do it right and use the copper tape. That's the best way that I know of. <coughs> So I'm going to use copper tape instead of shielding paint. To tape off the holes that I drilled for the bridge and stop tail. Yep, oops. I'm just going to ball up some tape. Put the sticky side out to a degree here. And jam that in there to keep paint from building up inside. Alright, so that covers the bridge and stop tail. Now the rest of these have a bevel here, <coughs> a recessed area for the controls. And I do want to paint that. I'm going to paint it black actually with my airbrush. So what I'm going to do to keep paint from getting into the cavity on the other side is I'm just going to tape it from the other side. Alright, now I said that the edges were the hardest part. As you can see, this one's round. Uh, like these have uh, just slight recesses for the covers, so that's a, a bit challenging. So, what I'm going to do is take my wider tape and just lay it across the top of the whole thing, making sure I've got the entire area covered. And then I'm going to use my nail to push it in right around that area. So just give me a second here and I'll show you what I've got done. I find that this is the quickest way to deal with this and it covers the entire cavity so I don't have to worry about anything getting in there. You'll see that you can still see the outlines of those cavities because I used my nail to push the uh, tape right into the edges. And now all I need to do is take a razor blade and follow that edge. One of the easiest things you can do with a razor blade, honestly. Then I just peel off the excess, and that's that. Not bad, right? Don't forget to tape off your tuning peg holes and your truss rod cavity. If you get paint in your truss rod, right where that uh, tool is supposed to go in there, you're not going to have a good time next time you try to adjust it. Alright, so I've just balled up some tape into my truss rod cavity there. That should be sufficient to deal with that. And then I've rolled some tape with the sticky side out. And I'm using that and just pressing it in for the, uh, the tuner peg holes there. So what I do is I create a little cylinder almost that's a little too tall for the hole put it in there and then compress it from both sides and it fills up the rest of the space. So that is our finished sanding and taping done. This guy is ready for sealer now and then paint. Any taping that happens after this will be to just mask off areas that aren't getting the color that we're working on. So we'll seal, sand, and then we'll move on to the color work. <coughs> uh, so in the next video I'll be applying the sealer. Now, I have spray can sealer available 
or I've got sealer in a quart, which is probably the higher quality option, but hey, it's, it's not a super high quality guitar anyway. So I don't know if you guys have access to spray equipment and whatnot. Um, if you're building a kit guitar, maybe you do. Maybe that's something that you went out and purchased beforehand, or maybe you don't. So what I'm gonna do is have you guys let me know in the comment section on this video, whether you want me to use the spray can sealer or the other kind. All right, so drop me a comment. Let me know what, uh, what I'm sealing this up with. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up so it'll be easier for other people to find. And subscribe to stay up to date with all the cool projects I got coming out. Also, a big shout out to Sovereign King, who does the vast majority of the music for my channel. Way better on guitar than I am. And to Troy from Noise Guitar Mods, I'll put the link in the description. The man is a great guitar tech, and he's taught me most of what I know about how the internals of these things work. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. See you next time.